Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 100 of Two Amazon Sellers and a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo. And to mark this big occasion of the 100th episode, Chris and I are super pumped to have Jason Boyce on with us. Jason, how are you doing? Oh, man. Hey, congratulations. 100. Yeah. I feel so special to be your 100th <laughs> guest. Thank you, guys. <laughs> yes, one, it's, it's awesome. And you're one of the very few that gets the uh, back reference to the name to Amazon sellers in a microphone. So you're obviously you very what. Whenever Beck's around, James Thompson and I, we go watch him. We love Beck. <laughs> that's, you know, he's that's, another old white guy that plays yeah. music. So that's what we, we like that. We like that kind of music. <laughs> he's. Uh, I actually saw him in Kansas City here at uh, Arrowhead Stadium. He was uh, with you awesome. too. That was a really cool concert. Back oh in man, that would be great. Yeah, that'd be great. It's, it's funny because Chris and I started this podcast um, late last year. And we we're just like, oh, what should we call ourselves? And every, you know, it's like AMZ, this, every name is like always the same. It's like some sort of, we're like all of a sudden out of nowhere, I was like, oh my gosh, two Amazon sellers in the microphone. It's perfect. Uh, yeah. So. So I, I, first time I read, I, was, I just chuckled a little bit. I was like, that is awesome. I love that name. <laughs> every once in a while, I wish I was always that good. I wish I had that moment of clarity. Like when I'm thinking of a brand name for different product lines on Amazon, it'd be nice if you had just that epiphany like that. Oh, this is the perfect brand name. Yeah. Uh, so, but it's my wall. You, hey, guys, you guys nailed it with this one. That's a great name. I love it. <laughs> Every once in a while you get lucky. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. But hey, man, we, uh, we just met you a few minutes ago when we were talking before the show started. We can already tell this is going to be a lot of fun talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's going to be a blast. But Anyway, while right off the bat, just for everyone listening and for us, Chris and myself, Chris, he usually when he walks off like that, usually the UPS guys come into his house. <laughs> All those, I thought either that or the dog scratching. The, oh, dog, I'm the, back, dogs I'm are, back. the dogs are barking and the UPS is probably at the front door. Uh, My tent is home, so she'll for sure barge in on us in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> Apologies okay. every time. It's, uh, it's the fun of, uh, of these times like this. I love it. Yeah, um, but, but anyway, uh, just real quick, give us – your background, no, we I we know a little bit of it, and you're gonna be interesting because you've been in this space a really long time. I mean, Chris and I feel like veterans, and we got started in 2014 on Amazon back in the heyday, but you got really started early. Give us your give us this your story of how you got into this space. Well, that is that is a long time, guys, 2014. Because you know, every year on Amazon is like a dog year because it's so hard. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> it's true. But you know, my my story is um I was just getting out of the Marine Corps. And by the way, my standard joke, the only difference between being a Marine and a big Amazon seller is the Marines was a lot easier. Um, <laughs> <That's> so I, <laughs> and I, I, I started in 2002. My brother had met somebody at a company called Overture. Um, mm. Overture had this tiny office in Pasadena. And guys, they invented pay-per-click advertising. They later got bought by Yahoo. Google stole their tech and got sued by Yahoo. And Google ended up licensing their PPC technology and then uh, perfected it with Google AdWords. And, and so we somehow got lucky. My brothers and I, we got lucky, met with these guys. We would meet with them at their tiny office in Pasadena as they were about to change the world in ads. And we were everywhere on the first page of search results with our first company, superduperhoops.com. And we sold basketball hoops, direct to consumer, drop ship method, right? And yeah. um, man, life was so good. We were on the first page of you know, Alta Vista, insert other name, Vista. There was like a hundred different search engines back then. It wasn't just Google back in 2002. And so, um, and, you know, we were, we were, so there's my interrupt interruption right there already. Hi, honey. I'm on a podcast right now. You got your Tesla wall connector. Wonderful. Great. All right. We're going to, we're going to be a Tesla household here soon. Sorry guys. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so we were all over the first page of search results at a nickel, a click. Let that sink in for a second. Five cents a click. Wow. Life was good. And, um, you know, so we did that about a year. And then some guy from Amazon, I, I wish I could remember his name. It was like three before Jeff Yerkeson, uh, who's now running Zulily. He was like, I think, our third sports and outdoors category manager. But he, he called, he picked up the phone and called and said, hey, you guys are everywhere on the internet. And we're like, yeah, we know because we're that smart. Uh, we just <laughs> happen to know a guy who helped us figure this out. And um, th we want you to sell on Amazon. And I said, what are you guys talking about? You guys sell books. What do you mean? You want to sell basketball yeah. hoops on Amazon? 
And um, I said, I just bought a VHS tape on Amazon. Come on, man. I mean, that's how long ago it was, right? And, and um, you know, sort of the rest was history. We launched, we were doing 100% drop ship. We did that. I, we got like three phases. I'm kind of in my fourth phase on Amazon as an agency now. But, you know, we were drop shipping everything. Amazon cut us off at the kneecaps overnight when they came in and started buying direct all of our Spalding hoops and selling them for 30% less than we could buy them. And then we started to work on exclusives exclusive unique UPC codes. Those were doing great following the Spalding thread. Amazon called Spalding and said, if you don't sell us the stuff the super duper guys are selling to you, we're gonna stop buying from you. Scared the hell out of them. And so we lost a lot of that business. And then we were like, screw this, we're gonna create our own brand. We'll just sell it ourselves. And we built an amazing brand, 17 years, top 200 seller, uh, had an exit. And then, um, yeah, then I wrote this book and started an agency because I had made every mistake guys you could make on Amazon losing and making my own money. And I thought this could be helpful. And I always loved helping other sellers. That was like the one thing that got me really excited. And then I'd go back to running my business and I'd get bored and then I'd, you know, reach out, Hey, how can I help you? Right. And so I, I knew that when that business was, was uh, behind me, I wanted to, uh, you know, help other sellers. And that's what we do now at Avenue seven media is we help folks with a private label brand rock Amazon. And, um, and you know, we, we've got some life changing stories and it just helps me get up in the morning. You guys know, you guys know what it's like to help sellers who are hungry, smart, energetic. And it's like, that's what, that's what does it for me now. So. Wow. I got so many things I want to talk about. But I, know <laughs> Dustin, I know Dustin's waiting too. So I'm, you know. uh, I'm just fascinated by this story because uh, literally you're the, I mean, uh, the amount of time, I mean, 2001, 2002, I mean, it's hard to even think back that far and what life was like. I mean, I remember, I, I think I got my first cell phone like in 2003. Right. Uh, I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, real quick, I gotta just ask this because when Chris and I started in 2014, we would tell friends and family what we're doing and they would have no freaking clue. I mean, yeah. it's like, you're, they're, you're like, yeah, I saw on Amazon. They're, it's like, yeah. what, you're like doing like thrift store type stuff or you, what, I mean, I was like, yeah. no, I'm launching it. I'm trying to launch a big worldwide brand on Amazon. Uh, and they're just uh, a partner in this whole deal. They're my, and partner. they're like, oh, that bookstore, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. I, it's hard to explain. And it was like, it was like, it was just some little, oh, isn't that cute? The little hobby that he's got going yeah. on. Inside. But I can't even imagine what it was like trying to, or what it was like. I mean, I'm assuming when you started, just the fact that you could start as a drop shipper. Oh uh, man! I mean, that's I, I, I have so many horror stories of going to these trade shows because that's how you found suppliers back then. Yep. And saying, "Hey, we want to sell your product. We've got SuperDuperHoops.com," and they're like, "Oh, the internet? That's never going to work." You know, because we launched SuperDuper SuperHoops.com after the dot com bust. Right. And we're like, yeah, you know, we think this internet thing's got legs, even <laughs> though the bus just happened, we think it's going to be around and they wouldn't sell to us because of that. And then later on, when we started selling on Amazon, we told them we were Amazon sellers. They're like, oh, we don't want anything to do with you. That that's terrible. We're not selling to you guys. We don't want to be on Amazon. It's like eBay. And I'm like, actually it's bigger than eBay. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, I mean, so many stories like that. And you know, my favorite stories of, people not understanding Amazon was my God talking to bankers like, Hey, we just did 5 million in revenue. We need another 2 million to launch the next five products. And they're like, explain this business model to me again. I don't understand your customer of Amazon. And you know, that, that is like, I start getting angry thinking about those conversations. I, I used to like going with a whiteboard and okay, okay, we're going to break this down. Right. I'm going to draw pictures for you. Dumbass. This is how Amazon works. <laughs> right. And they still didn't get it. They still didn't understand. So yeah, I mean, Dustin. Yeah, so it's been a long journey. Uh Amazon has come a long way, obviously, to the dominant position they're in now. And um, yeah. you guys were smart joining in 2014. 14. That's early. I wish we would have yeah. done it sooner. Yeah. <laughs> we talk about this yeah. is some podcast, and I swear we took it like a year before we even did anything. So Mm -hmm. I wish we would have done it a lot sooner. It was, better, it was you know, easier back then. It's a little bit difficult now. Oh, man. It was so great in the heyday. I mean, so we went good. from 100 grand to a million to 2 million to 4 million. Every year we were doubling. And, oh, and we were just throwing spec sheets up there with one image, right? Uh -uh. And it was just boom, taking off. And, 
you know, obviously we got more sophisticated over the years, but I refer to those as the good old days. <laughs> good old <Yeah>. days. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. Everything you bring up. I mean, we've experienced it with like, I mean, I've been burned by traditional lending on in this space because it just doesn't fit the model at all. And these, nope. these things, uh, I mean, just now, really, I mean, there's, uh, there's options available. Now there's really creative, good financing. Uh, we've talked to a lot of people on the podcast that are in that space. Uh, man, I wish that was around <laughs> when I started. Uh, and But it does make it a lot easier. So like you're talking about, talking to a bank i mean it's it's still if you go to a traditional bank it's still they're not super they don't get it the idea they don't, they don't get it. it at all yeah um, but i i love you said a second ago uh, talking about how you've made every mistake in the book and then that's just what's i mean that's what makes you an expert in something is learning from your own mistakes and keep yeah. going uh, yeah i mean that, that's exactly right i mean um you know i, I knew i wasn't steve jobs when I started building the private label business, right? I thought I was until I made some fabulous mistakes that mm -hmm. cost me hundreds of thousands of dollars, learn from them, and mm -hmm. then started to do this, you know, customer driven innovation and list reading negative reviews and improving the product for that to get to four and a half stars. And it was like, wow, this makes me seem so much smarter than I actually am. Yeah. And you know, you just, that's, that's exactly right, Dustin. You just, failure, so long as you don't just fold up the tent and give up you so long as you can grip the mirror and say, okay, how badly did I screw this up? What did I do this time that I don't repeat next time? And, and having sort of the fortitude to just keep going in spite of just, you know, burning embers of a mistake that you just left in your wake. Um, mm -hmm. There's a rain, there's a pot of gold at the end of that rainbow. If you can, if you can fight through it, there really is. Totally, totally agree. Yeah. I mean, I, I've made, I've made big mistakes. I mean, I was, I was almost done. I was almost down and out in about 2018, uh, just based, based on a big mistake, um, or, or a combination of a lot of mistakes probably. But, uh, yeah, perseverance is what's key and learning from them. And, and especially now because the barriers of entry are more difficult, I would say. And, and oh, yeah. you can, you can just, you can have stumbling blocks really easily. And so the people that power through, uh, get to this experience of selling in this massive, massive marketplace that's bigger and bigger and bigger. So it's it's, it's fun. Uh, I mean, we, we love talking about it. But I want to pivot real quick. I want to talk about your book. You you wrote sure. a book. Tell us about it. So you wrote a book. Why'd you write it? Uh, what's yeah, it? Great, great question. So I, I co-authored it with my good friend, Rick Cesare. Um, he'd be a great guest for you guys, by the way. Rick Cesare is a marketing legend. Uh, I'll tell you what I mean. So he took a taco grilling machine and turned it into the George Foreman grill and put a direct TV campaign, went out and found George Foreman, signed him for the product. He did OxyClean, uh, GoPro cameras, um, you know, one of those, one of those toothbrushes. I always forget which one, but he's a direct TV uh, genius and has built multiple billion dollar brands. And so he and I were at the Prosper Show, which is coming up in July, right? The, I'm on the board, mm -hmm. uh, board for the Prosper Show, the Amazon seller show. Are you guys going to be there? We're on the fence a little bit. Yeah. Oh, come on, guys. Just go. Well, I'll see you there. I'll see you there. Um, uh, all right. so, so I was at that one Rick first talked at. That's like it. 2015, 14-ish. You got it. Yeah. He was the yep. keynote. I also spoke, but I was the last person to speak while everyone was leaving out the door with their suitcase to go to the airport. <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and we we connected at that show and we realized that we were like 20 minutes away from each other. I was living in Sammamish outside of Seattle. He was living in Issaquah. And so we started to have like Friday morning coffee together. And he would talk about DRT marketing and and help really teach me everything I know about what, what works in terms of messaging. And, um, and then I would, I would teach him about Amazon. And so we start spark this friendship and he's like, you got to write a book about this. And I'm like, write a book. I like, it took me eight years to graduate from college and I'm talking about the four year degree, man. I can't write a book. And he goes, no, you have to, you have to write a book. And so, um, you know, we wrote it together and, um, we, we it took us about maybe nine months to write the book. And I, we started off with the book, to write this Pollyannic story about like, um, you know, how to make a million dollars selling on Amazon, right? Like the get rich quick scheme of the day on Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I started writing that book and you guys will appreciate this, Chris and Dustin. 
I, I, I got pissed. You know, I kept remembering all of these stories about something Amazon did or something an Amazon competitor did or something the bank wouldn't do, you know, and all of these things. And I said to Rick, I was like, we can't write that book. I, it's just not who I am. We got we to gotta make it real. We got to tell them the real story that this is really hard, that Amazon is not your friend. They're not going to make your life easier. In fact, they're going to make it harder. Mm -hmm. um, you've got to be on Amazon. Um, I, I say this all the time. I'm not a lawyer, but I think they've got monopoly, monopsony power. They own half, at least half of the online market share. You've got to be there because that's where the buying public is. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be there, do it this way. And by the way, because I tried every other way and failed at it to get to this one, mm -hmm. private label brand, really build something special, different. Rick's one of my favorite quotes from Rick is difference better than better. And then you got to play the Amazon game and you got to do it the right way. And so that's, that was sort of my gift to the seller community is writing that book with Rick um, and, and just basically telling it like it is and, and laying down sort of a solid foundation for new sellers or even big brands to read this and understand this is the way forward on Amazon. A lot of our audience is going to be new sellers. And when we first started this, Dustin and I, we listened to podcasts and we were that, we were that, we were those people, new sellers. Yeah. Give some words here for new sellers. What, what would you recommend doing, not doing? <laughs> maybe those that even, haven't even picked a product yet. Like get get off the fence and start going. Is that, I'm guessing that's what you're going to say. But uh, <laughs> give, give some words here. on If you're a new seller, nope. or you're just starting one, out. Save you your money. <laughs> save your money right now. Build up a war chest because it's pay uh. to play. And you're going to lose some money before you make some money on Amazon. It's just like another business, right? Think about this. Think about Target. When Target builds a new store somewhere, they put these financial models together and they say, we're going to have to invest this much money, which is a huge chunk of money. We're not going to make that money back for three to five years. And we know it, but this is the financial model. You have to think about an Amazon business like this now. <clears throat> um, I'm sorry it's that that's how it is, but that's how it is. When I, when I started, I was in an apartment we freaking went to the Spalding warehouse in Carson, California and loaded up my brother's Jetta, Volkswagen Jetta and crammed basketballs in there. It was totally <laughs> unsafe. We couldn't even see, right? <laughs> and then we turned those things into end tables until we sold them and shipped them right down at the, at the uh, Kinko's store, right? Or the FedEx store. And so and we didn't have any money. We, we made money from selling product and that's, that was the game. You cannot do that anymore. It, you need investment. You need, I really, you know, sure. You could go out there and retail arbitrage and you can go to the tent sale around the corner and, and attach it to a listing and make some money that way. That's, that's not a bad way to learn sort of the Amazon way and get the, get the wheels spinning. But if you're going to have long-term success, you need to build your own brand. And, and, and I, I break it down, you know, like easy so I could understand it, uh, how to come up with your own product, develop your own product, some resources go to, um, you know, customs.pangeva, thomasnet.com, some of those sources to find suppliers and how to negotiate, how to make sure you're doing quality control before that thing lands. Because if you don't do it, if you do it after it lands, it's too late. So we literally a step-by-step -step process. I'm thinking about, I want to start a brand. How do I, how do I think about that? What is a product that, that works for me? Um, and we, we talk about some, some good steps on how to pick a good product. And then the most important, and this is one of my fabulous mistakes when I learned I wasn't Steve Jobs, is make sure there's a market and make sure that Amazon shoppers are already buying something similar to your product that you mm -hmm. want to make. Make it different, make it better. And 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 you know, follow the rest of the steps. You got to drive traffic, you got to find a way to drive traffic. And more often than not, it's revolves around sponsored ads. You got to get people to enjoy it. You got to listen to them and not dig your heels in and take it personally when someone leaves you a bad review. Tell them, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for taking the time to tell me what's wrong so I can fix it. And this sort of iterative process, you know, Dustin, you talked about it. You gotta, you gotta play the long game here mm -hmm. and you gotta, you're gonna take your lumps, but so long as you have a process where you can do an after action, assess what went wrong, get some key learnings and don't repeat that behavior. You can work your way eventually to success as a six figure, then seven figure and hopefully eight or nine figure seller. And you sell to one of these big aggregators with all the money, you know? 
<laughs> uh, you're a hundred percent right. And I really like the way you're uh, breaking this down and it's step by step. But the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway is you're, you're setting expectations up front. I mean, we, at our role here in Solozo, Chris and I get have the privilege of talking to a bunch of sellers all day long. We get to talk about their business, where they are. And I think for, uh, especially for newer, newer sellers, you either have existing sellers who are kind of mad that this is the situation or new sellers who don't realize this is the case, um, that it's, you're, it's going to be a while before you're profitable. And, oh yeah. And, and you could have the wrong product and you might not be profitable and you got to be able to get out, you got to drop it like a bad habit as fast as possible rather than throwing more money behind it. And like you talked about, just just what your goal is, because it is different. This snuck up on me because I can tell the whole story about how I was. I did. Ever, I was, it was the dream come true. I was able to start my business. I was able to quit my job. I was working full time on Amazon. But at right around that same time, the barrier century got harder and the launch got more expensive. And now yeah. I thought I could draw to live off of. 2016 and was when things went. Poof. Yeah, oh, that was yeah. a painful and, year. Yeah. It's, it became very different. It yeah. wasn't like, uh, you, you know, before then I was launching products for 500 bucks and then, then yeah. they were selling $10,000 a month. And, yeah. and, but then it was, it was, then it was the reverse. You yeah. have to launch for 10,000, take 10,000 to launch it. Um, but anyway, I just think it's really it, it neat the way you're setting expectations because if people do have that, their proper expectations, then they can treat this the way it needs to be treated as a long-term yeah play and the, another thing you brought up and i'm talking too much here but it was really interesting how this whole aggregator space has evolved now this Amazing. was on our minds when we started and now everything from in my personal business I know chris the same way has transitioned towards how can we focus on the exit let's build something that's worth selling and that is cool <laughs> oh i couldn't agree more i mean as amazon put that squeeze on you know 2014 2015 2016 you know, CPC is a nickel a click. I yep. saw that movie before on Google, right? Mm -hmm. And now it's, you know, $2, $5. I've seen $14 a click. And I'm like, what? Who is doing that? And so, um, so yeah, absolutely right. I'm, I'm really excited, especially in the near term for sellers to have, um, you know, not, not, not only a, a path forward to grow their business, which you're spot on, Dustin. It's as hard now as it's ever been. It hasn't gotten easier. Part of that is competition. Part of that is the friggin' Amazon AI bots that fall in their damn false positives that happen every single day, right? Good Lord. I like to say AI is like a six-year-old and I got a seven-year-old and I love her, but I don't want to run in my business. You know, AI really started running amok in 2016 and making life difficult, um, you know, and the size and, and, then, and then Amazon rolled out the red carpet to the China factory which I have a big problem with in terms of the way that they did that, making it easier for China sellers than it ever was for a U.S. seller. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, but, but, but on, the, on the bright side, you got 30 companies out there that have raised probably $3 billion in the last 12 months going, hey, these folks that really put their blood, sweat, and tears into creating a great product and doing things the right way and creating a great brand, I, these guys are valuable to me and gals. And we want to go and pay these folks off uh, for all their hard work so they can go take the year off that's necessary to recover mm -hmm. from being an Amazon seller with a big, big fat bank account, right? So I totally agree, Dustin. I love that this is happening. I think it's all positive for sellers. There's probably some downside in there, you know, you know, when you when you got a hundred million dollars to burn as an aggregator, you're you're probably not worried about ad spend. So my guess is CPCs are going to continue to go up. Um, you know, and eventually these guys are going to figure out systems and repeatable processes and 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 make it harder to compete for the small guy. I think long term. However, um, you know, there's always opportunity. There's always nooks and crannies on a company that has half a billion products listed. Mm -hmm. You just got to find your niche. Yeah. I don't know if you, I may cut out here, but um, you mentioned something about like the knowledge and people have this, the knowledge now and people are paying for it. I'm a big fan of Shark Tank. And over the last two weeks, the two weeks ago, 
a, a, a shoelace company was on there, or maybe it was two, maybe three, two weeks ago. Yeah. Anyways, they said they launched their product using PPC ads, and that like. My wife and I were watching. She's like, "What are they talking about?" I'm like, just, just, I got, I got to pay attention here. And <laughs> and and they didn't know, like, the, all the sharks had no idea, like, about PPC ads. They didn't realize you could do that, or they may have not know the expertise on it. But it was cool to see that that is now creeping in and out more and more, and people are like uh, paying for that. Last week was really great. Last week it was a shoelace company. Uh, they were all out. They all got out. Robert came back in and he only did it because he wanted to get her on his team to help his other businesses out because she knew all about the Amazon space. And at the end, he says, he looks to Kevin and says, sometimes you just got to pay for talent. And he just, he just wanted to get her involved with her, his other businesses because she knew how to launch a shoelace company and get to page one and do like millions of dollars in sales and, it was like a thirteen dollar product. So it's the, pro it's more, the process, baby, not the content, right? Yeah, more and more it's people are, are paying for that. Yeah, ab cool. absolutely. Cool. And you know, I, I couldn't agree more with that sort of assessment by that astute investor. Well, I say this all the time. Or I used to say, I said it, I don't know, six or seven years ago. The next billion dollar products brand will have launched on Amazon or Instagram. And and why is that? Why is that? that these Amazon brands, I, I get calls from big CEOs from big companies all the time. And they say, Jason, why in the hell am I getting my ass kicked by this brand I've never heard of or this other brand? I said, because they know the Amazon game, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know the Amazon game. You're trying to put a square peg in a round hole, trying to layer on your B2B experience with some buyer who's never even used your product, who's making a decision on your life, right? You need to get closer to the end user consumer. And that's what the Instagram seller does. And that's what the Amazon seller does. That great product feedback from folks who paid real money to buy a product and have something to say about it when it's not right, right? Mm -hmm. that, that negative review is worth so much more to you than a positive review on some level when it comes to product development, right? Yeah. Certainly positive reviews are much better in terms of ranking algorithm and conversion rates. But, but, um, but, but that's, this is the future guys. This is, 21st century marketing. That's some of the stuff that we're trying to do at Avenue seven media is to try and, you know, look about this from a holistic, holistic view. You guys know this as an Amazon seller. You got to be a Jack of all trades. It's not an algebra equation. It's a calculus equation. You have to be able to do so many different things. Mm -hmm. And that's just not what these B2B brands grew up doing the wholesale brands. And so they're at a severe disadvantage and the ones who they all recognize it. They all know it. And so, and that transition from a wholesale business to a, a B2C, and I, I consider Amazon a B2C channel, is really, really difficult. And so what these sellers need to understand, to your point, Chris, and to the smart folks on Shark Tank, is that what you are doing and learning on Amazon is incredibly valuable. And frankly, it's the future. You, Yeah, you're touching on so many great points here. Um, <clears throat> This is why I think everyone who's listening should be pumped up and motivated because I'm a firm believer in the fact that this uh, evolution and e-commerce is actually a benefit to everybody. Products are getting better. You can't be a lazy product developer anymore. Um, you know, and so even, and that's why I think for a long time, I thought brand doesn't actually matter that much on Amazon. Like in 2016, 2017, that kind of hated nobody was really paying that much attention to the brand. All they cared about was this, this guy's got 10,000 reviews. And, and you're talking about Chinese manufacturers coming in. The brand name sometimes was gibberish. <laughs> I, mean, I saw one yesterday, JGP 1996. I know. That just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> AOL.com. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah it's exactly. Un, it's unbelievable. Yeah. But they're, they could be selling <laughs> half a million dollars a month. I mean, yeah. it's, uh, and so it's interesting, but, to your point about how the opportunities there, um, the way I want a story to tell people when I was telling what I was doing for my for my new living here is just like imagine if you could walk into Walmart and just shove your product on the middle of the shelf, and and it's just have it there for for basically not a whole lot of investment. You can get it right there. I'm like I'm like that's what I'm doing on Amazon. I know how to launch product and get it in front of people's eyes. 
And yeah. it's the same, it's the same impact. And mind I think- share. I call that mind share, right? Mm-hmm. In the old days of the CPG business, you know though what was the difference between a good product, a successful product, and a not successful product? About 50 to 70 million dollars. And what did they do with that money? They made a mediocre product. They put it in front of a focus group. And Rick taught me so much about this, uh, my co-author of the book. Um, They put it in front of a focus group who've never used their real money to probably wouldn't even have bought the product in the first place, right? So they're getting crappy advice about a crappy product, right? And they're putting it to market and they're spending $50 million in TV ad campaigns and they're paying millions of dollars to get end cap space in the retail stores wherever all the purchases were made. That propped up really bad products. And, and, and over time, you know, you get the, you get the brand, you, you don't have a review. You go to that end cap, you don't know if there's product reviews. So you buy what you trust, what's mm-hmm. been bounced on your, into your unconscious like a gazillion times so that you feel you know the name. You know, I know Tide, I know this name. Mm-hmm. And, so, and, and, and that's not what Amazon sellers are doing. Amazon mm-hmm. sellers are starting at the end consumer. They're throwing something out in the wild. They're listening to the consumer, the good ones, and they're, and they're making adjustments based on what they're hearing on Instagram, on Amazon, and making best-in-class products that no one's ever heard of. And so one other thing I want to say, Dustin, I'm with you. There was a time when I would go to China or my factories all over the world and say, I just need the lowest price because I, can't, I don't have the opportunity to put my brand in the best possible light on Amazon. It's a commodities market. I need commodities. Give me commodities. But as soon as brand registry happened, as soon as third-party sellers could do A+, video, brand store, right? All of those other elements, that's when the game changed. Mm -hmm. And that's when you now have the opportunity. And I say this all the time to clients and I I realize there's 200 million prime subscriber now, but I need a third. So 150 million, I'm I'm gonna go back to 2020 when it was only only, only 150 million prime subscribers. And I say to them, you can't compete with the China factories, give up. You can't compete with Amazon Basics. They have a pricing advantage, right? And by mm-hmm. the way, and they don't care if they lose money on an Amazon Basics product. Right. The 50 million people that are prime subscribers that go to Amazon and only search for price are not your customer. But that's okay because the 50 million on the top end who are making $300,000, $250,000 or more a year, you know, like my wife who will never buy the lowest price product are very much interested in your, your product. And if you can put your brand in the best possible light, you can focus on the benefits of the product, right, Chris? That's what Rick talked about. Mm-hmm. Features tell, benefits sell at that at that Prosper mm-hmm. show. And you can price high and justify, you can afford the ads, you can afford the fees, right? And you can afford to continue to improve and make a best in class product. And that's still the white space, if there is such a thing on Amazon, right? Mm-hmm. Building brand is an absolute necessity you don't have to be the lowest price so long as you sprinkle that pixie dust on what you've got. You listen to that consumer and make a great product. And that, if anyone, if any of your seller, new seller listeners take anything, take that to heart, right? That's the game. You think you're going to go and buy something on Alibaba that everyone else has and beat anyone on price? You are absolutely wrong. Don't do that. You're better off being a retail arbitrager and getting some discount deals and just attaching other people's listings than trying to to beat China or Amazon at their own game. Branding is the key. And you know what? You know, I I sometimes talk to, you know, I haven't been to the airport in a while, but I'm going to go because I'm going to the Prosper show in July. And I'll I'll see, you know, young people buying stuff on their phones or they're doing things on their phones. Like, hey, where do you buy your stuff from, right? They're like Amazon sometimes, or they'll say, I go to Amazon and then I see if the brand has its own website because I want to know their story. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. That wasn't important in the 80s and 90s, but it's critically important now. People will buy your stuff and love you if you tell your story. And that's another thing I talk about in the book. I tell my story, which is warts and all. Right. And I tell the story because that's what these brands have to do. It starts. That's the seminal moment. That's the that's the the, the beginning point for building a great brand is telling your true authentic story and sharing it with folks because these young folks who are buying stuff on their phone, they want to know who you are. They want to know what you're about and they'll be loyal to you if you share that story, honestly. Yeah. You got to be vulnerable. You got to share why you started it. You got to yeah. tell people what you want to do. Cause the, the big brands, they don't do that. They're not. No, that. They don't admit any mistakes. Yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. Institutional narcissism. I call it. Oh, yeah, they can't. They can't. They can't admit anything, right? Yeah, and, and, and yeah. doesn't let them be very fluid either. 
No. I mean, that's why they're having a hard time to compete. And this is, uh, this is something Chris and I talk about a lot of times. This is why this it was so attractive and appealing to us individually as his businesses. It's it, sort of a game. It's, com- it's competitive. You're, how can you do things better? How can you be more nimble? And, you know, constantly shifting. I mean, but to every mistake I've made is probably not shifting fast enough. It comes down. Oh, yeah. I mean, that Speed, like I agility. Yeah. Like I, I got too comfortable in uh, the commodities, how easy it was to launch commodities and not focus on brands. So boom, I got bit 2017 to I, I didn't shift fast enough when I could have, if I would have made that shift faster, but that's what makes it more fun. And that's why it's a blast because you can, you, you got to kind of navigate and shift and things go. And like you're talking about with your brand story, the really good people, you can tell when you look at a listing or if you if you're searching on Amazon, you can tell the people that are like, they've got these great sponsor brand videos that it's just captivating. It's telling the story or in their, in their a plus content, you see pictures of them, you know, you see their family business in operation. Yeah. yeah. And, and just, it's, it was really, it's neat. Now you're right. Big brands. There's no way they can compete against that. No, you know, there's two parts to the brain that are important in marketing, the frontal lobe, right? That's where people make their decision process. But the amygdala is so much more powerful in marketing. That's the feeling center that some people call it the lizard brain, right? If you can bypass the frontal lobe and connect on an emotional real person level with the consumer, you got them. Now, look, you can't ship them a crappy product because they'll ruin you. You got to make a good product or you got to make it right if you made a mistake or Amazon made a mistake for them. But if you can speak to that unconscious part of the brain, that makes them feel something, right? Now you got them. And that's what Rick is so great at. He taught me, I sat at his feet for years at the coffee shop there and just soaked it up. And that's what he was so great about. That's what people care about. You know, what's the real benefit to you? How is your product going to make my life better or solve a problem for me? And how can I connect with you? I need a, I need connection. I need some kind of connection with you. And that brand story is a really important part of it. And you know, you talk about agility, Dustin, I have to give a little shout to the Marine Corps because the Marine Corps has this, this thing called maneuver warfare. They're not the biggest force, they're the smallest. And so they don't have you know, the brigades that the army can throw at us. So they have to be fast and agile. And they, and they have this saying that I share with sellers all the time, always have a plan, but never fall in love with your plan. Because the minute you cross the line of departure, your plan goes to shit and you got to adjust and adapt, right? In order to not get killed. And so yeah. Amazon, you know, Amazon is a lot like that. It's, it's very much like that. And that initial uh, Marine training that I had has been incredibly valuable as a seller. It's still harder to be a seller than a Marine. But, but that, that, lesson, that lesson is always stuck with me. And that's what's required for long-term success. And it's fun. It's fun as hell, Dustin. Right? Mm-hmm. I mean, look, you get mad, right? But, when, but overcoming those obstacles and looking back in the rearview mirror, you're like, wow, I did it again. I overcame another obstacle. I'm a badass. I'm going to keep doing this, right? <laughs> no, it's when you get those emails and the subject line says, your Amazon account, dot, dot, dot. And you're like, oh, my God, what the hell is going oh, yeah. on here? <laughs> now what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> Please tell me it's not suspended. Uh, Here's my robot overlord making another mistake, right? <laughs> yes. It's, it's so true. Just, I mean, you can see what they're trying to do on Amazon, uh, like, like for face mask, for example, or when the pandemic was happening, they had to make so many fast uh, decisions. But man, that slap can just hit so many, uh, so much collateral damage. I mean, yeah. it's it's crazy what can happen, and you got to be you got to be prepared for it. Uh, which is another reason why your very first point, save. Like you need some sort of bankroll for this because. Uh, yeah, I can tell you from firsthand experience, you do not want to have put all your eggs in this basket, quit your job, be super pumped about your new life, and then have the rug pulled out from under you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's a, a feeling. That's shocking and painful, uh, and you will want to avoid that as best you can. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, yeah. Sleep and you know, tricky. I, you guys are going to have to pull me out of this rabbit hole if I start down it too much. But, you know, t- t- talking about Amazon, right? And I talk about this all the time in the press and 
wherever else, my own podcast and um, the, the day two podcast at GeekWire. If you if you don't mind me making that that, that oh, plug, we're, we're, we're new 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 podcast that we're launching. It's Amazon specific, but we talk about some big issues as well. And one of the things that I repeat over and over again is Amazon.com, Amazon the company would not be what it is today without the hard work, the product knowledge, the grit, the capital of the third party seller. Mm -hmm. They will not continue to be what they're going to become in the future without all of the same, without the third party seller. And they need to do better. They need to do better for these third party sellers. Having their, having, you know, a mom and pop business with three to six employees who can't make payroll that week because some dumbass robot made a mistake is not okay. Right. And the engineers are like, oh, it's like only 0.3%. Right. Well, that's like 20,000 people who now can't make payroll that week. And Amazon needs to do better. And they need to admit more freely how much money they make. The third party seller makes more money for Amazon than any other cohort. I'm mm -hmm. talking AWS, everyone, right? And they hide it really nicely because they don't share the gross merchandise value of what the true goods sold. They only, sh they only share that, that take rate, that seller fee. And so, you know, these are some things that I like to say. I, Dale Daz, my president and my COO say, stop poking Amazon in the eye. I'm like, they need to hear this, right? Mm -hmm. They need to hear that what makes them great, what has made them great is the third party seller and their technology combined together. And I feel like, like you said, 2016 started to get away from that and mm -hmm. they're big and they're massive. And I know they're trying to replace human beings with AI, but they need to do better. And um, I still think it's the best place to go to launch a product company because of that feedback and because of the size of the market, it's enormous. We're talking about, you know, half a trillion dollars in goods sold in 2020 through that, through those dot coms. That's big. Uh, but Amazon also needs to step up. Yeah. And I think they're trying, but they could try much better because they're doing things like brand registry and getting like brand pages and, and inviting more brands on the, on the platform. But at a flash, it could be all over with. Yeah. Chris, don't get me started on brand registry. Good Lord. <laughs> I mean, I love, I love it when my clients gets the email that says, you may not list this product because you're not the brand owner. And then we have to screenshot from the seller central, the brand dashboard that shows we're the rights owner, right? Yeah. I mean, come on, man. Come on, Amazon. That shouldn't happen. Mm -mm. I love brand registry when it works, but that's just yeah. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So you're, you're a hundred percent right though. I mean, they could do a ton better and, and it's it, it does seem like it's a pendulum that keeps swinging and like they got way out of whack earlier. I mean, years a couple of years ago, you could tell. I mean, it was like they didn't give a crap about the third party sellers at all, and they, and they were actively competing directly against them. Like yeah. they were taking your product data and then launching uh, Amazon Basics. Oh yeah, that, yeah. That, and it was a hundred percent off of your hard hard work and effort. Uh, they seems like they've dialed that back, and it seems that they at least have made a token play. You see these commercials every once in a while where they'll it'll be an Amazon commercial and it'll, it'll highlight some family business. That's like at least they're kind of broadcasting that there's third party sellers out there. So hopefully the pendulum will swing back. You guys don't vomit in your mouth a little bit every time you see one of those commercials. <laughs> I, know. I do. I know. I throw them in my mouth. I'm like, I'm like uh, come on. Yeah, they're like, like call them play. three months later when their account gets suspended because some uh, some bad actor attacked their account and dropped the F-bombs in their search terms, right? I mean, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, look, you know, I, you are much more positive than I am. <laughs> I look at yeah. Amazon dusted. <laughs> um, I mean, you know, the very first episode we did on the day two podcast, right? Mm -hmm. uh, on GeekWire, we interviewed Peter Daring. Peter Daring um, uh, created, remember, I don't know if you guys saw that, that became viral, that YouTube video about he has this great camera bag. Yes. Uh, his, his brand name is escaping me right now. Sorry, Peter. Um, you know, his brand name is escaping me, but he made this amazing best in class camera bag selling for $99. Amazon copied every single bit of that thing, even the logo tag and just oh, put right. Amazon basics over the exact shape of the logo tag and sold it for $30. Now, if you oh. compare that product physically and you touch it, you could tell Peter's product is superior and Amazon's product is junk and it's not going to last nearly as long, but they put it right there, right next to his listing. And, um, you know, they're probably making about the same amount of money, 
but like, come on, really? At least have some imagination. At least make yeah. your own damn product. And don't be ripping off the third party seller like you're doing who made you what you are, right? That's like yeah. my ad admonishment to, to, to Amazon. And so Dustin, I think it's still happening, unfortunately. Um, mm. You know, but as long as folks like us can keep embarrassing them when this happens, maybe they'll learn and maybe they'll try to get better. And I think that's important, right? I think it's important for everyone to speak up and talk. And look, I've been in the press a lot over the last X number of years because I, I think they call me because I don't, I don't care. Right. I, I'm not, <laughs> I don't, I'm not afraid to tell them what's really happening. Mm -hmm. And so this is one thing that I want everyone to remember. If a reporter calls you and asks you for comment, it's one of the only things that Amazon listens to. The PR department picks that up and they send it down to the manager and say, is this really happening? Because we need to fix this. Or the managers who are buried, right? Can you imagine growing 44% this $1.7 trillion company, uh, how busy they must be. But if you speak out about it and enough people speak out about it and say, we love you, Amazon, but you got to do better here. I think that actually infects change. A hundred percent. Yeah. We got to keep, keep their feet to the fire. That's Absolutely. And you guys are great. Keep them honest. Keep them honest. <laughs> well, that, that video, kudos to Peter. That video is really good. Yeah. Wasn't it amazing? Like, yeah. He talks about the differences and like how they actually did it all. And like they, they studied it. And he's like, or you could just buy Amazon Basic. It's the, go the googly eyes, yeah. right? Because that's what they are. I mean, they're zombies over there copying and pasting, right? I expect oh, that from a Chinese factory. I do I not did. expect that from Amazon. Yeah. I did see this. Yeah. That yeah. was amazing. That was a perfect play off yeah. of what they did. <laughs> that's so cool. They didn't oh. get mad. They got even. They're just brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> brilliant. Oh, man. Man, we could talk for hours and hours and hours. I feel like there's so much to talk about. But um, real, I, we we do. I do have a hard stop here in a little bit. But I want to definitely give you a chance right now. I want tell everybody out there who's listening. How can they get in touch with you um, if they they're loving what they're hearing and they want to work with Avenue Seven Media, your company? Let tell us get, how do we get in touch with you? How can they get started working with you? Well, well, thanks, Dustin. I appreciate that. We do work with private label brands. Um, and um, you can reach out if you want our help as an agency, you can reach out to my website, avenue, the number seven media.com. Um, you can also reach out Jason R. Boyce, B-O-Y-C-E on LinkedIn. Um, I'm on Twitter at J-A-S-B-O-Y-C-E, Jace Boyce. Um, and then you can, you know, buy the book. It's on Amazon for now. They haven't taken it down yet. And, uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, buy the book, read the story. There's a lot of good information, especially if you're brand new, know what you're getting into. Consider that book a good recon of what you're about to get into and a roadmap for some basic steps for how to get there. Um, and then, you know, check out the, you know, stay on this podcast, right? You guys are awesome. I love your podcast. And, and also check out day two. We, 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 um, we try to keep Amazon honest there. So if you're interested in some of the, you know, not necessarily just selling, but what's going on in the warehouse with the unions, if you're interested in what's going on with AWS and, and some of these other big antitrust issues like that, you know, reach out on day two and follow day two podcast from GeekWire. And, um, you know, if you're out there, seller, hang in there, hang in there, get, get, get informed, get knowledge and reach out to us. We'd be happy to help. That's great stuff. I will definitely be tuning in to the podcast. Yeah. Um, I, I'm fascinated by that kind of stuff anyway, just to see where that's going, like what happens in the industry as a whole, uh, bigger picture type stuff. So I will be definitely tuning into that. I and mean, everyone who's listening, I mean, it's obvious uh, your passion and what you know and your expertise is there. And I encourage anybody to reach out to you. They got to go buy the book. I'll be buying that uh, later today as well. I'll check out the book. So I'm excited to read all that. Uh, but man, we, we will have you on because there's uh, about 15,000 topics. We didn't <laughs> <laughs> Another so, good thing about Amazon, right? Yeah. So we'll, uh, <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get you back on again in the future and we'll, we'll talk about more stuff. But everyone, go check out uh, Jason. Go check out Avenue 7 Media. Buy his book. And lastly, if you are a seller and you're looking uh, for help with your advertising, we're here for you reach out. You can go to uh, solozo.com. You can uh, book a demo. We'll, Chris or I will be on that call. We'll talk with you about anything with your Amazon business. We'll talk to you about how we can help you with your advertising as well. Um, and then if you like this kind of content, if you want to hear cool people like Jason who have been in the space, seems like longer than Amazon even existed. I don't know how possible, <laughs> but you did. Uh, well, 
make sure you're following all of our content. So we go live on uh, Slozo's Facebook channel, our Facebook page, Slozo's YouTube channel, uh, LinkedIn page. You can like all those pages, subscribe, turn on notifications, and then obviously subscribe to our podcast, whatever channel, podcast platform you listen to. So Jason, thanks so much for coming on and we'll be at this again uh, tomorrow. And hopefully we'll have you on very soon. See ya. Congrats.